guys this was a rude awakening for me right because i have never seen an airport that was so dead in my life like there were only two shops at heathrow terminal 2 that were open and it was wa smith and boots just imagine that all the designer stores were closed all the food um hot food stores the restaurants were closed everything like it felt like literally like a morgue in the airport like honestly like it took the joy out of traveling for me like it definitely took the joy out of traveling hi guys welcome back to my channel if it's your first time here welcome so this video has been so highly requested many of you guys have been like funke how are you able to fly from london to canada during this whole pandemic period and how was the process like what was the reality of actually traveling through heathrow airport uh, arriving in canada what was required did you do covid tests you know how was immigration so many questions and that is why i'm creating this video for you guys today if any of you guys have been flying during this pandemic period i would love to hear about your stories your experiences and what is different about flying now that has changed basically what has changed in the process of flying now drop a comment in the comment section below and let's have a dialogue about that typically i would have filmed the whole process like in person basically carrying a camera and filming but it's so overwhelming for me because i was traveling with a baby for the first time guys it's not easy i'll probably do another video to talk about that too um, but nevertheless i really hope you appreciate the effort that i'm putting to put this video together and give me a thumbs up for it i also want to apologize because i've been promising to do this video for so long and i'm only just doing it now so i appreciate sort of like your patience with it um and i really hope you love the video quick intro if it's your first time here my name is sassy funke and i'm a nigerian travel and lifestyle content creator typically on my channel you find travel vlogs um flight reviews anything to really help the average african or nigerian traveler travel better or smarter so if you're you know all about travel advice nigeria content all that jazz you need to subscribe and join the family so straight to this video how was i able to fly to canada disclosure some of you guys on instagram already know this because i do i'm very open on instagram that my husband right is a canadian citizen also my baby even though she was about five four five months four four months at the time is also a canadian citizen so because of that the canadian embassy or the canadian government has basically um, um put out um a paper or a guideline basically saying that canadians can return to canada and families of canadians can return to canada too so me being a spouse of a canadian entitles me to basically travel to canada with my husband so that's in essence how i was able um, as a british nigerian passport holder to actually travel to canada what i'll do is i'll actually share the link as to where this government guideline and this information is in the con in the description box below so you guys can check that out i'll also put a brief um um sort of like screenshots of it so you guys can see that this information is genuine it's true so you guys can check that out i think it's also key to note that throughout this whole pandemic period flights to canada never stopped there definitely was a reduced schedule but like throughout the whole time air canada was still flying to toronto i think to calgary like maybe three major airports from london they were still operating like flights to those cities i think on a daily basis even just not as frequent not as frequently um as normal so in this next part of the video i'm going to be sharing a little bit more about how the experience was at heathrow airport how the process was you know, just going through the airport and also how it was landing in canada what was required you know what documents were given to us and etc because there was a lot especially for me that i am not um, a canadian citizen so first of all i would say when i got to heathrow airport Heathrow Airport, I think it was Terminal 2? Two? 2 or 4? I'll clarify that. It was the Queen's Terminal though. 
and on getting to the airport they made a point to say that everybody had to basically wear masks once they got to the airport and not only that um there were signs everywhere in terms of like social distancing um but they also put a sign up there that only travelers could enter the airport but it was actually nobody checking if you were checking your ticket to see if you were a traveler or just a family member escorting a guest there i'm sure that has changed over time um but then there was no sort of like restrictions in terms of people entering the airport so that was sort of the process getting into the airport so pretty much the whole airport which wasn't a really packed airport to be honest at this stage was everyone was wearing masks right so we then made our way to go and check in and this was the interesting part because we went to check in and they sort of like checked like my passport my baby's passport my husband's passport and they just saw my british passport and they were like okay since you have a british passport you guys have to go to a separate line to interact with canadian immigration because i'm british right so i think they have to basically clear you before you can fly um to canada so we're in line there were quite a number of people in line and literally i could see like the results being given some people were getting rejected that they couldn't fly um when i got to the counter the lady was basically speaking to somebody in, in canadian immigration and she'll be passing on the information i gave her based on the question she asked me to the guy she basically then checked that she requested for my marriage certificate to confirm that indeed i was actually married to a canadian citizen so fast forward 15 minutes later they basically gave uh, approval saying that yes i am allowed to travel and i was asking the lady that did they actually reject people she was like yes they do all the time so it happens we met, made our way with our baby and all her stuff to security. What I noticed at security though was that the typical security line for first class, all that jazz, special people was closed. Bear in mind we're fine economy anyway. And everybody was made to sort of go through the sort of like general admission line for security security wasn't too too bad to be honest it was quite smooth there was nothing different from the norm um it was like from the norm but what shocked me and i've said this before is that because i'm a star alliance gold um member typically i'm allowed in that terminal to visit like all these fancy lounges like first class lounge for chris first class lounge many like really nice lounges and I was super excited that I'm going to actually like get get and floss myself you know take a few selfies I'm kidding but at these lounges but I did not know that every single lounge at the airport was closed like closed and for me that is a huge part of the airport experience so it's I felt like ah, I can't go to a lounge like ah, ah you know I think that was painful that was painful for me because I was expecting to eat some free food and chillax but that was the yeah so that wasn't going to happen but on arrival at the departure hall guys this was a rude awakening for me right because i have never seen an airport that was so dead in my life like i you know sitting at home in your house you don't you know you know people are not traveling that much as at then but seeing the reality of what was going on here there were only two shops at heathrow terminal 2 that were open and it was wa smith and boots just imagine that all the designer stores were closed all the food um car food stores the restaurants were closed everything like it felt like literally like a morgue in the airport like honestly like it took the joy out of traveling for me like it definitely took the joy out of traveling nevertheless i went to wh smith got myself a cold no i went to boots got myself a cold sandwich i hate cold sandwiches so badly but we had no choice, so we just got it like that. I also got myself and my husband some drinks and things we can take on the flight. So for Air Canada, upon actually getting, or I should mention that I we not nearly missed our flight, but because I was feeding baby girl and the terminal was so far from where I was, they were literally calling our names by like, <laughs> I've never, they've never called my name before by all those announcers. They were like, yes, Olufunke, da, 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 make your way. So we're literally like running with the baby, everything to get to the air, um, to get to the plane on time. When we got to the plane, 
I love this. I've gotten the name, but Air Canada has a clean something kit whereby they give you this plastic bag, they give you a bottle of water, they give you like sanitization stuff. I think they give you gloves too in there. Um, and they basically give you everything. All the air hostesses that we met on the plane had their masks on. Like everyone was super protected. And I also love the fact that they actually had social distancing done on the plane. So everybody was spread out. I feel like this plane had, I'm sure, no more than 30 people on the whole whole plane like it was very empty which in a way i liked because i was traveling with the baby for the first time so it, it sort of made maneuvering easier for me i didn't feel claustrophobic even though i was an economy and i think it was smart that we actually booked economy and we didn't waste money on business because you had enough we had like a four row you know the the ones in front the seats in front we had the whole row which was amazing so let's talk about taking off we took off on time I was given a bassinet, which is obviously the sort of like the baby cot for the baby. And I was also given a lot of like sanitization wipes, sanitizing wipes. And I assume that's normal. I don't know if because of COVID that they gave me a lot of that, but that was good to have. So I used it to basically clean, you know, the baby space. I even laid like a blanket and everything so that, you know, she's not contaminated. So the next section of the story is about the meal service, guys. You guys that have been following me on YouTube and watching my flat reviews know that I don't play with my food. Like, I feel that if the food is not on point on a flight, the review is already bad. <laughs> it's true. The review is already bad. So, wasn't I shocked when it came to meal service and they gave me this brown box. Brown box, you know. I love my hot meals. They gave me a brown box with... I think it was some cheese sandwich. Ha! Huh. First of all, I hate cold sandwiches. I don't know if you guys are like me. I hate cold sandwiches. But I was like, I tasted this sandwich. I said, God. And apparently, you know, that is the mandate now. They've stopped um, serving hot meals on flights due to COVID. <sighs> COVID. Ah, COVID. <laughs> Why? Why? To be honest, it wasn't good. It wasn't good. I wasn't used to that. But they did put a cookie in there. The cookie was delicious. But for a flight that was near like, I think it was like seven, eight hours to Toronto, I was disappointed to see the list. And when it came to drinks, right, there was no cut of like, oh, do you want Coke? Do you want apple juice? Do you want this? It was here is your four bottles of water. They kept on dropping small, small bottles of water for us to drink and hydrate yeah it was highly i say it again it was highly disappointing but that's the reality of i guess the space the world we're living in right now so when it actually came to um during the flight we were advised that everyone had to wear their mask throughout the um throughout the whole flight which we did um what i found interesting though is i went to the back at one point to speak to the hair hostess to get more cookies from her because the cookies were good and she was like you know like distance like i should give her distance. i thought it was a little bit rude i get it but like when you're giving me my water you're literally right beside me but when it came comes to me coming to actually for cooking you're like stay back stay back i thought it was a little bit rude to be honest i don't but i, I get it but you're literally beside me when you give me water and when i can text for a cookie you're like step back you know so that was that was a bit awkward i'm not gonna lie like yeah i get it but yeah we will both wear a mask yeah, so the process of being on the flight, to be honest, was a little bit disappointing, but I get it. I understand it. I love the fact that they were doing social distancing um, on the plane, which made me as a first time traveling mother have a sort of a better experience, to be honest, because I can imagine the anxiety, sort of the freaking out. I would be freaking out if there were so many people on the plane, you know, even when the baby cried. She cried a little bit. She wasn't disturbing anybody in our vicinity, so it was okay. So that was actually a benefit of traveling during COVID time, to be honest. So we arrived in Canada. What happened in Canada? When we arrived in Canada, there was so much like information, papers being handed to us. Um, and we had kept our mask on. We had to keep our mask on the whole time. We had to fill some forms. And some of these forms, basically, we had to put in where we're going to be isolating for 14 days because Canada at the time, and I believe still now, if you're coming to Canada from internationally, from an international destination you actually have 
to isolate somewhere for 14 days and you have to give the government your information of where exactly you're gonna be isolating for um, you have to sign the document you also get given a lot of information about COVID what you should do if you're symptomatic or you have some so there was a lot of information being disseminated to us on arrival I think so the airport in Toronto did a lot of work just to sort of like educate um, incoming passengers and I really really love that I, I I I've heard like for example in the UK put that right in the UK they didn't really get checked they didn't really give they weren't given any information um, but I think the Canadian government is doing an amazing job like what do you guys think as an have you what do you how do you think Canadian government is handling COVID that I'll love 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 to hear so guys as I said there was a self-isolation policy of 14 days we did our 14 day self-isolation um, and everything was fine and yeah so I'm in Canada so you guys I really hope I didn't rush through that so much if you have any questions make sure you drop it in the comment section below so that I can answer them for you um, I really hope it's giving you a little bit of insight into how sort of traveling has is um, during this pandemic the conclusion is it's not fun it's not fun anymore uh, but it's for all our safety so I get it thank you very much for watching this video um, thank you so much for subscribing if you're not part of the family please please subscribe really love to have you um, yes thank you so much and I will see you on my next video bye